Hi there, I'm Black Pie and I'm broadcasting at the UK, around the world. Um, for those of you of the first time passing, I'm born in the UK, Jamaican parents. I lived in the US for US of A for 11 years, lived in Africa for one year, and um, I'm a full-time employee for a government organisation. And um, yeah, I think that's basically, um, I'm an author, I'm a counsellor, I used to DJ, but I've put that on sabbatical for a little while. And yeah, basically, that's a bit about me, so you can get a little insight. So I just talk about lots of different things, mostly um, that I think is going to um, help people, or I think they're gonna, they might benefit from the advice. Sometimes it's just about, it could be about anything, basically. Anyway, today I want to, I had promised that I was going to um, tell people how they can live on under £50 a week. And for some people, £50 is still too much. Um, but um, I've seen people spending hundreds on food shopping. And um, I just think it's extravagant. So I'm just trying to think, how can we save money? still feel comfortable but not feel as though we have to spend a lot to feel satisfied because we create our own level of satisfaction we kind of determine at what level we're happy with our lot some people they might feel as though they're hard done by if they don't get ice cream for one week or if they can't afford desserts or you know, or they don't have, or maybe they can't afford a bit of meat. Do you know what I mean? Some people can feel really hard done by. So what I'm trying to show you with this strategy is that if you put it in your mind that you don't have to eat certain foods to feel good, then you'll be more inclined to spend less. This is about our perception of what it is that makes us feel as though we're at a certain level. And it's in our minds. It's not a reality. Like I said in a previous video, all we need is enough in our bodies to make us feel comfortable and to sustain us. And you see people fast, you know, people can go without food like they did in the, in the Bible for 40 days and 40 nights. I mean, I'm not saying you have to do that. I think modern day, especially if you're working and you're going out, you do need to um, at least have water in your body you know, fruit juices and stuff like that. But technically, you don't have to eat every day. Your mind is conditioned. They have this thing that they say, oh, you have to have at least three meals a day. And then some people say the most important meal is your breakfast. You know your body. You know what you can do without. I've gone 18 hours without food on some occasions. Um, I don't think I've gone a day without food because I use my brain too much and your brain can make you feel hungry and it can make you feel exhausted and so sometimes I feel as though I can't go a whole day but if I was if I was determined and I decided that I was going to sleep for the whole day um, I can go without food so um, I'm not I'm not suggesting that you go without food when I'm talking about this budget but I am suggesting that you can cut down and you may need to cut down in the very near future. Um, when Brexit, when we, whatever happens with Brexit, whatever happens with, if we happen to have World War Three, whatever is happening imminently, we're going to have to conserve our supplies and change the way we eat. So that being said, um, how to eat nutritiously for under 50 pounds a week per person. Well, it's not really per person, but yeah, I'll do it per person for now. Um, and this is just the first um, first set of shopping. After that, you'll find that some foodstuffs overlap. Like if I've put here a five pound, five keg bag of rice, that's about four ninety nine. you can get it for. And you know that's going to last you a month. So you're not going to have to pay that five pound the next week. So even though £50 might seem a lot for some people, it might be a pittance to others, but it's just a kind of... Um, a middle point then that I feel people can live comfortably spending £50 a week on food shopping. Okay, so 
lentils, a packet of lentils or split peas, whatever way you call them. That's a useful staple. Um, packets of pasta, two quid, they're about a pound each. Tins of tuna, Vienna sausage, rice, like I said, you get a five pound bag, five keg for five pounds. You can get liver for breakfast. You can get, you know, a few fingers of green banana. And as long as you've got your flour, you can make dumplings, you can make fried dumplings. You can feel like you're living like a king, especially in the UK. You have your fried dumpling and you only have two green banana and a piece of liver. You're like, what? I've told people that's what I'm having. And they said, boy, that's a posh breakfast. You know what I mean? So it's your mentality. Um, frozen veg. Always have some frozen veg. So if you want to make some soup or something, um, get a dozen eggs with a dozen eggs. And you've got your flour and you've got some. It doesn't have to be butter for, um, you don't really need butter. That's an acquired taste. I love butter. But, and I don't like margarine on bread. But I don't mind margarine in cakes. So you can, you know, you, you get your flour, you get your eggs. You can make a cake and you can have a slice of cake each evening after work. If you make a big bowl of soup on a Saturday, you can have that as, you know, especially if it's one person, you can have that, um, a bowl of that in the evening during the week for a two or three days. And if it tastes nice, you're not going to mind if you have it for two or three days. Like I said, you have these people who say, I mean, I eat day old food. I mean, I eat leftovers. I'm like, please get a life. Who are you so special that you don't eat leftovers? You know what I mean? These people, some people that just, and they think that, 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 they think that means that they're at a certain standard, you know, when they say that. Flour. So you've got your plain flour and you get yourself raisin. Those big bags, it's only 150 each and look how long they last you. You can get a packet of saltfish, that can be your little luxury because that's like £1.59. Then you get a tin of callaloo, that can last you a couple of days. It's nutritious, tasty. Of course you have to have your seasonings, you can get a chicken, a whole chicken. You get a whole chicken, depending on how you like it. You can have a couple of the legs uh, for your main meal. Then, you know, the next day you have the breast, you can make sandwiches with it. You can use the wing and the bones to make soup. It's not hard, peeps. This is under a 50 quid. You get a bottle of milk just in case you want to make your cereal. I like porridge. And you get a big box of porridge, I think it's about £1.50. That's going to last you more than a week. And that, that can start you off in the morning. But you know, a bowl of porridge and a boiled egg. And that's all within your budget. People sit down and have egg, bacon, sausage and toast and butter and marmalade and all this kind of crap. It's not necessary. When you have your meals, you know, you have to have steak, no steak for dinner. You know, no one piece of yam, no one piece of dashin. You don't have to have that every day. Every now and then you can have it like a treat. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, what else is there? Get a bunch of bananas. You can get a bunch of bananas for a pound. And there's like seven or eight fingers of bananas. That's green, that's yellow bananas. The green bananas, for some reason, are a bit more expensive. I'm not quite sure why. But, you know, you get your green bananas. You probably need two of those with a meal, but you're not going to have them every day, a couple of days a week. So you could get a bunch of five green bananas. You have that with dumpling. You know what I mean? It tastes good. You can get, like I said, stalk margarine. It's only a pound. The large, big tub, and that can last you quite a while. is is very cheap. You can get your four apples. You can make apple crumble if you like apple crumble. You've already got your flour. That's not extra. And you get your sugar. That's all you need for apple crumble. I think when I'm thinking about these... Um, this kind of budget, I'm assuming that you have your seasonings, like your cinnamon and your thyme and all that kind of stuff. If you haven't, it might cost you a bit extra on the first shop. But basically, because I mean, all those seasonings can cost you about a fiver. So let's take the seasonings out of this shopping list. OK, we're just talking about the main things that you need. Um, to the coconut cream, that's for your um, rice and peas on the Sunday. You've got your chicken. You've got your your roast, you've got your your um, frozen veg. You can have a posh dinner, love. 
doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg. Every now and then, if you fancy something a bit more nutritious, you can. You, the, the day, the weeks that you don't have to buy the rice or um, the flour, you can get a tin of um, Guinness, a tin of malt, and your sweet milk, and you can make your little punch. So you know you're always kind of keeping to a budget of no more than fifty pounds a week. And like those, like I said, those ones that overlap, those are the t that is the time when you can get your little luxuries, or you can top up on your seasoning, or you can top up on your onions and your scallion and all that kind of stuff. Because um, with the rice, that's a fiver. With the flour, the two big bags of flour, that's another three quid. That's eight pounds. And there's something else that um, overlaps. Um, I don't know whether it's a frozen veg or whatever, but whatever it is, you um, even at eight pounds, that can get you. Whether it's a Guinness, if you want to make Guinness punch, if you want to have a piece of dashing, or if you want to have a piece of yam, or you can get it out of that when it overlaps. So you don't have to feel deprived. Um, what else? And then if you think about things like washing powder and um, washing up liquid, cleaning stuff, go down to the pound shop. You'd be surprised. You don't. The secret of saving money is not to buy all your stuff in one shop. Work out like I know. You know, a lot of people were buying um, apple cider vinegar and paying like eight pound a bottle for it. Eight pound. And that's just like the brags. Eight pound because I've paid eight pound a bottle for my apple cider vinegar, but if you go to Ald Aldi, it's one ninety nine. So you have to kind of think: what am I buying from one shop, and what am I buying from another shop? Work out what, what, what how one shop benefits you. Shop to benefit yourself, not to benefit the shop. And you'll find that, like with the soap powders and the. The shopping up, the sorry, they are washing up liquid. You can go down to the pound shop to get that, and you can still get brand names if you're inclined for brand names. You can still get brand names from the pound shop, and it's like when you're wearing clothes, you don't have to spend a lot of money on clothes. You can mix and match, and like um, like I said, there's certain things you need quality in. Like, there's certain things I don't improvise on. I don't improvise on my earrings. I don't improvise on my watch. I don't improvise on um, my bras. I don't improvise on certain clothes. What I like is a bargain. I like a bargain. So it has to be quality, but at a base price. That's why I like TK Maxx. And sometimes people say, I can't stand TK Maxx because it's got all of, it looks like a junkyard. But sometimes you can go in there and you can find a decent item. I went in there the other day and they had this kind of cape and it was Italian and it was a woolen cape and you put your arms through it and it fell. It was really quite nice, red and black. And it was from £644. It was designer, £644. Hundred and forty-four pounds, and it went down to thirty-one. And my mind was saying, "Oh, get it, get it." It was six hundred and forty-four pounds, and it went down to thirty-one. But then I thought, "Where am I going to wear it?" Unless I'm, you know, I can't wear it to work. I could wear it to work, but then you have something that you have to pull over your head, and suppose me here, me here, come off or something. And you know, you kind of think if you're going out, it's difficult to take it off. It's going to mess up your hairstyle. And it wasn't practical. It didn't have any pockets. It wasn't practical. So I said, you know what? Even that's just £31. I'm going to leave it. But my point is, is that you can get good quality stuff if you're willing to take the time and look and still look bloody good. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. You need, just need a little bit of patience. Sometimes you can get some tops from Primark. Black always... You can always kind of use black as formal, as dress down, work. You can mix and match it. It usually works. And like I said, Primark do these these black trousers. A lot of times you go into these workplaces, especially offices, they tend to wear black trousers and a top. But they do black trousers 
decent back trousers that you can wash and wear for a fiver. And if you want to go somewhere special, yeah, you can go to Next, you can go to Wallace, you can get something special. I always have a decent pair of trousers and I have my stuff I wear to work. Sometimes I dress up, sometimes I don't. Depends on what mood I'm in. But I'm, I don't believe that you have to spend a lot of money to look good. And that's the mindset you have to have. You don't have to. These people who buy designer clothes, who really cares? Who knows? People who are celebrities, even if they put on something from Primark, people would think that they were um, wearing something expensive just because they're celebrities. Nobody recognises what they have on. And I remember I had a pair of jeans and I thought to myself, I want to make them different. So I got the bleach and I kind of made a design on the bleach and everyone was saying, bloody hell, I love those jeans. Where'd you get them from? Did you get them from Italy? Are they Italian? Nah, just a little bit of creativity. Um, you know, um, there was one time when my daughters and I, we decided, we wanted to come up with our own brand and we called it Indigi Blue. And we all had these, all our jeans. We did a similar thing. We used the bleach and made designs on the outfits. We had cat suits, we had jeans, we had shorts, we had all sorts. And it looked really, really effective. It didn't last very long. We got bored. But the point is, is that you can emulate what um, celebrities have, if that's your bag, and you can create it yourself without spending a lot of money. Um, what else do you want to do? And like I said, you know, you can go change your shops. If you, if you like Tesco for one thing, if they've got a bargain, I mean, it does mean you need time. But when you want to do your bulk stuff, like, you know, you want that big, box of soap powder you can check out Aldi you can check out Sainsbury's you can check out Tesco and you can kind of think okay that they've got it on offer this week just go down there for your you know your bulk for your big instead of paying 10.99 somebody doing it for special for 6.99 you've saved four quid you have to be sensible with your spending so you know I don't like poor quality stuff. I will not wear cheap stuff. I don't like anything that's cheap or that looks cheap. If I've paid, if I've bought it cheap, then that is a totally different thing if I've got a bargain. But it cannot be cheap originally. I don't like cheap stuff. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can't get quality stuff on the cheap. That's what I'm trying to say. Some people even go to um, these charity shops. Um, I've been to one once and I think I've got a bag. But then again, you just, you know, you have to be of a certain mindset to be able to do that. But yeah, some people get some good stuff. You go to one of these rich areas like Harpenden or St Albans or Chelsea or um, South Kent. So it's South Kensington, you go to their charity shops and where all the rich people, they just wear it once and then they don't want it again. You can go down there if you've got the time, pick up some nice stuff, stick it in the cleaners or rinse it out or whatever. You're good to go. You look like a million dollars. Anyway, what can we have on that budget that I just told you? I've given you the, um, the supplies that came up to 45 pounds. And um, I think that works out to about 8,000 Jamaican dollars. 8,700 Jamaican dollars. That's what 50 pounds works out to. And um, okay, Sunday. Okay, we're gonna have a bowl of porridge and a boiled egg every day. That's your protein and your fiber. On a Sunday, you're gonna have your rice and peas and chicken. And then you can have your apple pie. We've got the apples, we've got the crumble. We've made the crumble as your dessert. Um, on Monday, you've got your leftovers from the chicken. And you, what you can do, you can take the bean, the, the uh, wings off and, you know, the, the wings. But have you noticed you don't get neck anymore? My mum used to love the neck of the chicken. I don't see neck of chicken anymore. That's a thought. Anyway, I was going to say you could take the neck and the wings and the feet and they chop off the feet as well but yeah you can use that put that aside for some soup put it in the freezer 
and then you can make soup for the Saturday. Um, so you've got your leftovers on Monday, so you don't have to worry. Depending on how big the chicken was, you might even have that food for the Tuesday. But if the, if you've used it all up, or if you've got somebody coming over and you're sharing it, it might not go to the Wednesday. On Tuesday then, on the Tuesday, so on the Tuesday now, you do your saltfish and your callaloo, your green bananas and your dumplings. And you can save some, put some saltfish aside and make some fritters as some kind of snack. And then that saltfish and callaloo, you can have it with rice and that can last you a couple of days. On the Wednesday, like I said, that's the Tuesday and the Wednesday. So the saltfish and callaloo will last you till the Wednesday. On the Thursday, you can have your liver, your green bananas and dumpling. And that can last you till the Friday if you want it to. Um... Or on the Friday, you've got seven pound change from your forty, from your fifty quid. You can treat yourself to a takeaway if you fancy it, or you can just use it as extra for your shopping, as a savings from your shopping. On Saturday, you've got your Saturday soup. You bake a cake. So every evening you come home from work, you can have a slice of cake with a cup of tea, and you're satisfied. So, like, it will be expensive for one week, keep for another week, because we overflow. And um, if you go on a job, if you're job hunting, if you're looking for a job, you can always buy a thermos. And you, you can take your soup and put it in a thermos instead of stopping or finding yourself down the West End or finding yourself in a place where you have to buy sandwiches to tide you over because you feel peckish or hungry. Take a thermos, take a sandwich with you so you don't have to um, use your money and buy an expensive sandwich for 249 and a drink for a pound when you when you've got drink at home you can make yourself a, a little tea or if you've got soup left over you can take soup with you and you can save money um, what else is there Tea and coffee, you can always get that on special. That's another thing you look out for. When you're looking for your soap powder and your cleaning stuff, look out for tea and coffee. That's always on special at some point. That's when you buy it. And I think that is it about saving money, cutting down on your shopping and learning how to live a bit more modestly. Okay, bye-bye.